Hey everybody, we're going to discuss grounding and I'm going to show you a utility pole and there's a reason that the utility pole has a ground wire on it. It's part of its circuit. Part of its circuit. Your house will have one also. It's part of the circuit from that wire right there. All right, so let's get over here. We're going to discuss solar power and why DC circuits don't need to be earth grounded. And by doing so, you're, you're causing yourself a bigger problem than you're fixing. All right, come on. Okay, now I'm out here explaining to Kira how proper grounding works. Proper grounding don't include solar. I know what people tell you. I know what these people who sit in an office, get a government check, write all the rules, will tell you. But I have been out on numerous solar jobs where they've been massive grounding all over their panels that have been destroyed by lightning because they became a big magnet for the lightning huge magnet so if you were lightning and you were coming down and that solar panel was a half a foot above your house and you had a shingle roof where do you think that lightning's going to go it's quick as path boom to the ground yep. through your stuff so I, i'm i'm really getting burned out on these people going we're going to earth ground our solar <sighs> and it's kind of like saying uh um I'm going to earth ground my van. Well, it's DC voltage, right? Um, but no, solar's different. It's freaking not different. It's DC, it's direct current. Direct current does not derive its ability to function from the earth. The utility grid does. Your inverter doesn't even have to have a ground because it's not deriving its ability to make its sine wave from the ground. That's exactly what utility does. That's why you see what we showed you in the beginning of the video. The ground is the third part in their circuit. This is not part of a ground of any kind. What would you do with one like this? Look at this. Where in the hell's the frame? What are you going to do? Ground it to the negative? That's, that's, well, you're just eating up your resistance. You're creating a field of resistance, of absorption, actually. This is a aluminum frame, but it's on a DC, direct current device, a solar panel. So right now, she's looking over a pair of these ground rods. Now, this is a ground rod, and the reason you use a ground rod is because you need to do what? You need to create a circuit. You're creating a circuit, all right? So that ground rod gives you the circuit you need. The utility company doesn't give you the circuit. That ground rod does. Okay? They give you two phases. All right? You split it with a ground. Okay? And the common that's coming off of their transformer is not possible without the ground. You got me? All right. So, so basically what we have right here is we have what is usually used as a ground, which is copper-coated steel. And then this one's just steel. And... This is, they're both magnetic. They're both magnetic, but this one is actually a better one to use for your ground. Like when you put a nail in the physical ground, because I do that for my gardening, it creates a, um, an imprint of iron around the nail when you take it out of the ground and the nail starts to go away. And basically what happens with that is it makes it better because it can go out into the ground a lot, a lot more effectively. And with this, it just doesn't do that. Okay, so as she's explaining, and, uh, and it makes all the sense, you know, um, if you go to certain countries, they won't let you use this. But we are in North America, and we are beholden with, uh, the, educated people. with the educated people who never turned a freaking screwdriver in their life unless it had uh, orange juice and vodka. Okay, <laughs> so this here has more surface area as a piece of half-inch rebar than this 5 eighths copper cladded steel rod 
And the difference is, is that this right here for grounding is going to create iron oxides as it deteriorates, and it will, de it will take 100 years. But as this deteriorates into your soil, it, can, it actually allows a higher dissipation of current than this does. I have seen a lot of these where lightning has struck, and it has just literally, you could just grab it with your fingers and slide it out of the ground. But I have seen these that they put on the bottom of radio towers. Yeah, they don't use that. They use that. And they use this on the bottom of radio towers and lightning has struck and it has made even more of a conductor in the ground as a result. So this is a fool's game. They charge you $30, $40 for that. This is five bucks. You get it? So when this oxidates out into the ground, it creates a bigger field. When the ground dries out around this thing, it'll slip slide around in there or you'll have pockets and especially around gravel. Gravel will, this is protected by the copper. It will turn green and it'll actually, just like you've seen a, a, uh, an outlet that's got some kind of oxidation in it, you lose con contact, that's what this will do. This here will get more and more and more. The longer it's in the ground, the more conductive it becomes. So. If you're going to pour a concrete slab on a house, shoot you about four of those three-quarter inch size in the ground around the four corners and use that as your ground. You're better off. You're way better off. All right. Now, so me and her is going to do a little quick discussion. She's going to grab her expensive ground rod. We're going to leave this, the better ground rod on the ground. And another thing, guys, if y'all want to learn, if you're going to ground something, so you're going to put a lightning rod up. Go buy you some 21 foot lengths of top rail. It's fence, fence rail. And put you three together like a TP, and put you another one in the center and weld you together about eight of those where they'll travel and go down the length and hit the ground. You'll have a lightning rod that'll attract five times more lightning than anything they can produce. And it'll keep it away from your solar, away from your roof. All right, so over here, this is a pickup truck, oldie but a goodie. And we have on the truck, we have tires. Now, what would we do with these tires? You think we can ground this, Dad? Should we ground the truck? Yeah, should we? It's DC voltage. It has an AC alternator. Are you crazy? <laughs> um, DC voltage, but it has an AC alternator. Smart move. Here, Kira, let's, let's do what the people are telling us to do. Um... I'm trying to get this damn ground rod. It ain't going to drive good. This is your truck, hon. You sure yeah. you want to do this? I don't know. I don't think so. What's AC alternator? Obviously. It's alter. It has to have ground rod. Yeah. It, 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 it's just. But. Don't, but it's drive, on... don't drive it fast. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So. Watch uh, out for the sparks. Yeah, sparks will get you. All right, so let's get that out of there because, uh, Kira, I, I think you're smoking something. <laughs> and um, we don't do that. We don't connect that to the ground. It's direct current. Do you get it? Yeah, but what if we grounded this into the ground? You, you want to ground a lawnmower? Well, that's what they keep telling me to do. It's DC voltage. It's DC voltage. Yeah, you're right. And it does have a little alternator on it. Alternator? Alter. Yeah. 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 Sign weight. No, Kara. We don't? No, we don't. Okay. No, we don't. No. Yeah, but what if we grounded this into the ground? The, the trailer? The trailer. Well, on the it trailer. It doesn't move around that well, but it's not like it's going anywhere. It's kind of permanent, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Unless I use it, which I do. Um, all right, so, well, it's it's sitting on wood. So, yeah, yeah, ground would make a lot of sense. But wait a minute. All that solar on its roof, like 2,250 watts, that's all, uh, that's DC, ain't it? Yeah, I think so. DC voltage. Yeah, oh, hell. I don't think so. Well, that don't make much sense. Huh. Why would you do that? That's, that's, that's DC voltage. 
So what's the smarter move? Should we like go over there, like on the top of the building and put us a lightning rod so that any kind of something that came down would be attracted to a much higher point? Would that be a smart move? Maybe, yeah. And that'd be smart, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. So, so now that internet doodad has never been struck by lightning, but for some strange reason, there's a telephone pole in the back of the property that's got nothing on it, and it's been hit once. Oh, yeah. Oh, but it's it's probably 10 feet taller, so maybe that's why. So look at what we're talking about here, okay? I want you to look. Now, this trailer don't need a ground rod. Your solar on your house does not need a ground rod. Let's get back over here to solar right quick. We need a mow over here. You need a who? We need to mow over here. Yes, we need to mow bad. Maybe. Don't laugh at those tracks. That's those are Kira's, and she's still working on both of them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I have my own Murray mobile. That's right. This is look, look, her nickname's Murray. So she's got here. I'll walk this over right quick. When she was younger, she couldn't pronounce her middle name, Marie, so she spelled it that. Could you get any sillier than that? <laughs> All right. Now, yeah, I'm hung up with her. Okay, so now, but, 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 but Johnny Two Chins and Kara Murray, um, we're being told on the internet and it, cause the internet never lies. It, uh -uh. Has the internet ever lied to you? No. No. Uh -uh. Yes, yes, no. <laughs> so there is aliens in your ear canals. Okay, so now, here's the problem with this. There's no connection to this panel. If you, if you get a connection to this panel, so there's a guy on the internet, he shows putting his meter to this, but he don't show you the amperage because he can't. But if he, if you put a meter to that, if I suspend that in the air and I put a meter to that, that's sensitive, a decent one, and I stick the one piece in the ground, or especially, especially if I stick it to an active in use ground rod, like from a house, then I will get a voltage reading. But what I'll get is called a static shadow and it'll make me scared like hell. And my panels, because I'm attaching some of them to the ground, they'll spark on me. Don't so you're actually creating a problem by hooking them to ground. All right. Now, back over here, we have a solar panel that has a positive and negative, or here, positive and negative direct current like your like your battery dc current they are not in any fashion whatsoever connected to that frame not at all take a look in the glass there's your bus bars there's your frame this is all eva material it's non-electrolytic good stuff now no worries all right and for my aussie friends no worries mate it's all good if you do that grounding thing, you're going to end up with a divvy coming to your house. And it works like that. So, what have you learned? Freaking rebar at $5 a stick is a better ground rod than this. Than your wallet breaker. <laughs> than your wallet breaker. All right? So, what we're looking at is what? We're looking at Kira's next big job. That. <laughs> a cheaper alternative to the ground wire. So, what is she telling you to do? Use this. Use rebar for a ground rod. You won't be sad from it. Nope. And you're gonna live a hundred years. Yeah, if you live a hundred years, man, after you've installed one of these, if you're old enough to install one and you're gonna live another hundred years, man, you better be teaching us a lesson, right? Right. Right. Um, so, anything that I do, if I put a solar panel on the roof of this, if you've got your motor home, here, watch this. Come here. Yeah, I got full in the windows. I don't want to run the furniture. If I've got my motor home, yep. all right, I've got a little one. It's 40, 40 foot pusher, but I can put all the solar I want on it. Kira, what's the question you need to ask? Do you ground this one too? I got to stick a ground rod on that. I'll go get the ground rod if you have to do don't it. Don't do that. Now, wouldn't that be more realistic? It's got propane, it's got diesel fuel, it's got mama's alcohol in there. <laughs> all the important things. It's got a dachshund. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So did I help you with a conclusion? Don't ground them. If you're looking for a great way to mount these on a shingle roof, 
get you some used 26 gauge. It don't have to be perfect. And you can use the whole screws on it. Put the roofing tar down and mount this on your shingled roof. It'll make your solar panels, as you can see, run cooler. And if you get a nice white ones, you can actually run your bifacial solar panels by just putting them about six inches off the roof on roofing metal. Tip of the day. My tip. Was that a free tip? I think so. It's not a free tip. Kira wants you to go to Kofi.com at uh, johnforkira.com down below the video down there say it again get down there get down there she needs knitting materials so you guys this is the smart way of doing it and for a real quick one i wish i could have made this an easy quick video but remember the beginning where i'm explaining to you that from the utility company they send it out at 60 80 100 000 volts the ground is part of its circuit the ground is never, ever part of your circuit for this. And as far as inverters are concerned, I don't ground any of my inverters, and I've never had one blow up. Overloaded common, static discharge in your ground will damage your inverters. Let them float. Same thing with this. All right. What does Kira got to say? And that I, is? I got to say, y'all be good and go down in the link of the video and buy me a coffee because I'm going to work on my YouTube channel. I'm working really hard, but I need more yarn. She needs more yarn. <laughs> what the heck, right? I bought her some. Come on. Let's go, hon. <laughs>